Hi everyone. Today we're going to make those two trinket dishes that I asked you to vote on a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're not making them exactly the same way, but there will be two. One will be uh, just a small plain one. We're going to actually decorate it rather than put a decal on it. And the other one is going to be a uh, dark one with a bit of dichro with a satin finish to it. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art. My name is Jeff. And as I said, we're going to make a couple of trinket dishes today. Now, trinket dishes can be used for a whole bunch of things. In fact, I don't think they should be called trinket dishes. I think they should just call, be called small dishes. Um, because you can use them for all sorts of things throughout the house, besides putting trinkets like your rings and that in them, your keys in them. You can use them in the kitchen to put things like jams and olives and all that sort of thing. So they're very versatile and uh, you can make them all sorts of shapes and um, sizes. Now something a little different about the video uh, this week is I won't be putting the firing schedules in the actual video itself. I'll be putting them at the bottom of the description. Now the reason I'm doing that is um, twofold. One is, is that you don't have to pause the video to actually uh, make note of the schedule. But the main reason is that if I want to change that schedule, especially because I may have made a mistake, I can do that quite easily in the description. Don't forget, I love comments and questions. So if you've got any questions at all or any comments, put them in the comment section below and I will answer all your questions. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. Okay, I nearly forgot. I uh, just want to remind you that at the end of the video, I will be answering some of your more recent questions. Um, so stick around until then. The two trinket dishes we'll be making today will be very similar to these two. These are the ones that I asked you to vote on a little while back. This black one has some dichro capped with clear and it has a satin finish. We'll be making one um, basically the same at uh, around the same size as well. And this one here, that's black on the bottom and just white on top and it has a little decal. But I won't be putting a decal on it today. Uh, we'll be decorating it with some frit and hopefully we'll get a nice uh, pattern on the top. Now the materials we'll use will be plain 3mm black, 3mm clear and 3mm opaque white. And a little bit of dichroic for the black one. The frit we'll use is this, which I think is turquoise blue. No, sorry, transparent turquoise, I should say. And I say think because I purchased some of this off of, a, of another artist and it wasn't marked, but it certainly looked like um, transparent turquoise. And I'll be using some opaque um, vanilla. The moulds we'll use are these ones here, which are 100 uh, millimetres square. To make this uh, little black trinket dish, I'll be cutting uh, a square of black, 100 millimetres by 100 millimetres, and the same for some clear. And I'll also cut up a few little pieces of dichro for the decoration. For the smaller trinket dish, I'll be cutting two squares, one white, one black, and they'll both be 80 millimetres square. And I'll cut just a few pieces of dichro out of this scrap. Assembling the larger black one is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is, and I've cut some dichro here, is just place our dichro on our corners. Get 
get them where we want them to be. If you notice, I'm not making any measurements here. This is just by eye. And the glass is all clean, by the way, and then just lay up the clear on the top. I'll straighten that all up. With this smaller one, I'm going to first put some of this, um, well, I hope it's transparent turquoise, um, on the top of that. Just push it around a bit. Now, I don't expect to get a lot of colour in this because it is transparent. Um, it will tend to disappear a little bit on the white. Now I'm going to put some uh, vanilla on that. And if I'm right, and that is transparent turquoise, we should get some nice reactions when it's fired. There we go. I think that'll do it. So now I'll just move that over onto our black base. And I'll clean off anything that's fallen off. And then we'll get them into the kiln. Well, the results of our fusing are a little mixed. This one here is pretty much as I expected. That was turquoise. And um, we do have a bit of a reaction between that and the vanilla fruit. So that one I'm happy with. But the results of this piece are not as I had hoped. Um, it's fused fine, but we've got bubbles. You can sort of see there in the reflection, we've got bubbles near the dichro. I think what's happened there is that the, uh, of course the dichro is in a little bit, the clear glass has slumped around it and trapped the, the air there. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't worry about it because I don't mind bubbles, they add a little bit of interest, but a couple of these are too close to the surface and they are going to break. So I'm going to have to co-work this. I'll co-work the edges to straighten them up and then I'll sandblast it before I slump it. Now I'm not going to um, fire polish this or in any way try to fill those holes in because experience tells me if I um, fill those in with uh, clear frit or something, I'll still see them there. And I'm not going to take it up to refuse it because the other bubbles will come further to the, or closer to the surface. So I'll just sandblast it and these will break, some of them will break and I'll sandblast them well. And then we will slump it and we'll get a satin finish with a couple of extras. So I'll get on and do that now. Okay, prepare yourself. This is what we're going to actually be slumping. 
A lot of the bubbles were just too close to the surface, so I ended up grinding them out. And so I didn't have any undercuts, so I've ground them out fairly well. I think I've got rid of most of them. And we made a feature of it. Now, how that's going to actually look once it's all slumped, it's going to be a surprise at least anyway. So I've got my um, moulds up here, all sprayed with boron nitride. I'll uh, wait a little while for them to dry and then we'll get them in the kiln and then we'll see how they turn out tomorrow morning. So how did we go? Well, this one, I think, has turned out nice. You can see we've got a little bit of reaction in there, a little bit of depth because we used that uh, transparent turquoise. The only problem I find with that one is it hasn't slumped as much as I would have liked. And that's probably because of this one, because when I checked the kiln, I looked at this one and of course it's all black. And I think it's slumped a little faster than the smaller one. Less weight on that one as well. So this is our questionable one. It's it's nice in that it's got a really nice satin finish to it. And the dichros all work fine. Not too sure about the holes though. Certainly no good for food with the holes in it. But certainly would make a nice uh, trinket dish for other things. I could have filled those holes in with opal frit and refired it and uh, that would have given a, a, an interesting finish maybe with a like an Egyptian blue or something like that and I could have uh, slumped it the other way around so that that was the inside. Only problem of course is then the decoration is underneath where you wouldn't see it that well. Hang on, nearly under drop it. So that's how they've turned out. Give us your opinion. I'd really like to know what you think. So now to your questions. Um, I've got a couple here today. Um, I'm not too sure I'm going to pronounce this properly, but Sai Li asked about bubbles in glass and uh, what, you know how to get rid of them or how to stop them and where they come from. Um, the glass inherently has bubbles in it. If you ever pick up a piece of texture and have a look at it, it's got some bubbles in it and you pick up bubbles obviously when you sandwich two pieces of glass together. Uh, you can use a bubble squeeze firing schedule to get as many out as possible but honestly you will never get rid of them. Um, there will always be some bubbles in the glass and uh, when you fuse them some of them will rise to the top. Sadna did ask me about uh, some toners she uses in her printer whether it was suitable. Um, I couldn't say exactly, but I will put a link in, in the description for this video to a page I have that explains more about these printers. And I believe it has a link to another page that um, has details about the actual toner cartridges that are suitable. Um, but have a look at that anyway, if you've got that question. And uh, I think you'll find all the answers there. Me Guy asked me about uh, one of the firing schedules where I went to 800 degrees without uh, any hold and whether I needed to have a hold. Look, that's a hard question because it depends upon a, a whole bunch of things. Um, it depends upon the finish that you want on the piece, how fast you ramped it up. Uh, it depends a bit on even your kiln. Um, basically, I have a peak inside my kiln when I get up there and I make that decision whether I need to have a hold or not have a hold. And finally, Christy asked me about using boron nitride in the moulds, um, whether you can use it multiple times without uh, respraying it. Um, yes, you can, as long as the surface is in good condition. I have found at times that um, it's been damaged, like when I've been lifting the bowl out of the mould or something like that. I've touched it and I've put a little imperfection in the surface. And that will show up in the next bowl. Uh, sorry, in the next bowl you use it in. So typically, I give it a really light brush with a very soft brush, uh, just to get that surface a bit more uniform. 
and then a light spray. When I say a light spray, I mean just once over it with a very light spray. So that's all the questions I have today. Um, thank you for uh, asking them. I really appreciate that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you've got any questions, don't forget in the comment section below. If you want to watch a couple of more videos right now, you'll find them up there. And um, the subscribe button down there. Don't forget your notifications. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.